So this was sort of an impulse buy. I was uh, down at MB Klein, aka modeltrainstuff.com, um, the other day, and uh, this uh, I saw at a price that I couldn't resist. So what it is is the Allegheny, and uh, number sixteen oh one is one of the survivors. Uh, I believe this is the one that's out in Michigan. Sixteen oh four, I think, is actually the one that's at the B and O Museum down in Maryland. Oddly enough, I was actually thinking about making a trip to go see this and then the uh, train place after that, but didn't have time, so I ended up just going to the train place, but picked up the Allegheny. I had one of these last summer. It was a River Rossi model. Um, ended up putting Tsunami 2 in it and traded it away. Um, the Allegheny's always been one that I've liked and kind of wanted to have in my collection, so just decided to get one again. So we'll take a look at what we got here. This model is not, uh, I mean, it's not new to the market. It's been out for probably a year, year and a half now. Can never do this with one hand. Hold on a second. There we go. So, of course, you have your typical stuff in here. So here's a take a look at it. And what do we have here? This is a spare driver, and there's smoke fluid in here, and of course the model itself. I really like the packaging. Um, I like this method of packaging opposed to the hard foam that's all around it, which can sometimes break off detail parts when you're putting it back in, similar to the way that Broadway does things. But I do like this packaging, um, so we'll take a look at it here, and of course one thing that is a little bit cooler on this one versus the River Rossi is that it is all die cast. So it's it's got some hefty weight to it. I wouldn't say it weighs a whole lot more than what my old one did um, just because I added some extra weight to mine. But uh, I haven't actually run this yet. I ran it at the store briefly just to make sure that everything worked. Because that can sometimes be a big deal on MTH locomotives. If you buy one and it doesn't work, uh, then you're waiting and waiting for MTH to fix it. Not the best people to get a hold of sometimes. And I'm sure, you know, many people out there can comment on their experiences with MTH. I haven't had particularly good ones myself. So hopefully this engine never has a problem. So... I really like the ability to just flip it open here and get it out. And you can hear all the metal parts in there. So we'll put that down for a second here. Okay, and I also got the tender out here. One thing to note um, on this model versus the River Rossi is that the wheels are black, whereas the River Rossi models, they all have white walls. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say that's to reflect present day, the way this engine looks now, because at one time I believe they all did have white wall tires. And it has some pretty good weight to it. Uh, the tether system is these two pins here. One thing with this, um, I don't know that I have confidence in this tether being able to hold a significant amount of weight because it's just a piece of plastic. And then there's the board that's attached to it. So that kind of makes me a little bit nervous. But a really nice coal load on there. And again, everything's metal on this. Okay, so we got it on track here. It took me a moment to uh, kind of re-familiarize myself with MTH steam locomotives as they have pretty much a different function set than most other steam locomotives. Um, out of the box, of course, um, it comes programmed to address three, um, even though MTH always wants you to use their DCS system, which I don't have. I plan on getting one um, just because it is a little easier to run their locomotives um, through that system. 
Uh, but it does run just fine on DCC, so it's not like you can't run it on DCC. It's all programmed uh, from the factory to run on that, and they have been for many, many years. Even ProtoSound engines from 10 years ago will run on DCC, so don't get it in your head that they won't run because they certainly will. Um, I guess maybe sometimes people just don't know how to use them. It's not a whole lot different, so we'll apply track power here. And to start this engine, because it doesn't come on with track power, you have to hit F3. And the number boards are controlled by F5. I'll, of course, keep those on. And, of course, still have your bell on F1. And you have the whistle on F2. And you can also do a grade crossing sequence with F11. Pretty cool. And the smoke's starting to come out a little bit here. One thing that's pretty cool is you can adjust the volume of that with F13. Okay, so we got it fired up here with the uh, the big smoke on. If you bring it to idle, it will just smoke you out here like crazy. Nice thing is you can just hit F12 and turn it off. So you're not dying of smoke inhalation. If you're going to run this, I do suggest running it in a well-ventilated area. Must be time to go. And the cab chatter kind of randomly comes on also. We'll check some speeds here. One thing that does make me a little bit nervous on this one is there's some valve gear noise or the uh, running gear. When you get up to high speed, there's some metal clanking. Makes me a little nervous.
that metal noise just makes me a little bit nervous, but 62 mile an hour isn't too bad. And there's a lighted cab light that of course comes on also. And it turns itself off whenever it goes into motion. So that's just a little bit of an overview. I'm not going to do a full in-depth review of these just because there's been tons of those already done here. A couple things of note on this model. Um, since this was kind of, um, I guess it was sort of like a return uh, which is why I got such a good deal on it. There were some things that were missing, um, such as for the rear coupler, I don't have the, I guess, the little adapter that lets you take off the electronic coupler in favor of the, uh, like, a scale coupler, like what's already on here, so like a TD. I kind of like the electric coupler just because I can hit a button. I think it's F8, and it just decouples on the back. It's just not the most realistic-looking coupler that's out there, and we'll take a look at that. How well you can see that there. But that's it for that. Also, another little cool thing that's in here is there's a little magnetic door here. This kind of comes off there. And then there's volume, and also you can turn the smoke off from there also. Um, the manual does not actually come with the model. You can print it out online. So, I mean, that's not a huge deal. Um, one thing that does kind of concern me with this is that metal noise that it's making whenever it's running at high speed. Um, part of that is my track is not the best. It has a lot of dips in it, obviously, because I'm running on carpet here. And hopefully soon I'm going to build the layout. I know I've been talking about it for about the past year, but I think it's going to happen this summer. Hopefully. And there'll be videos of that, of course. But um, overall, uh, I don't like it quite as much as what I did my River Rossi, and I still may end up going for the River Rossi at some future point. Um, but for until then, uh, this is a nice stand-in, and maybe I'll keep it. I don't know, but I don't particularly trust the, the noises that it's making, and uh, also I don't particularly care for some of the uh, proto-sound limitations that you have just in the way that the functions are different than other things it's not that much of an issue you can run it it's just that you kind of have to set up all your controllers a little bit differently for this one again not a huge deal uh, but for the money um, because these generally run in at least the mid to high 300s um, I mean there's some deals out there as low as 370 380 on the internet um, the Reverasi one is not made anymore, but you can usually find it for around the same price. Um, I kind of like the Riverasi model a little bit more, but that's just my thoughts on this one. We're not going to do any crazy pull tests on it. I will mention that I had 52 cars hooked up to it. Pretty heavy load. It had really no trouble at all. There is a set of traction tires that's on the back set of drivers. Not sure really why it's on only one set of drivers. Um... So, I mean, the pulling power is going to be pretty good on it, so you're not going to have any problems there. It is a die-cast model, but even despite that, again, I don't think it really weighed a whole lot more than what my River Rossi did. So, that's it for this one. 